Okay, so this segment should be significantly more interesting because now we actually get to do some work on heartstrings. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to quickly point out where on the creator site you'll be able to find the documentation for the stuff that I'll be showing in this section. Um, from the home page, if you hit docs, and then you go into, um, it, some of this is actually covered in two places, oddly enough. If you go into the authoring section, and then click on um, audio setup and mix and MIDI setup, You'll find information about working with audio stems, working with Reaper, doing your um, count in and your tempo map, which is what we what we'll be doing in just a couple minutes here. But separate from that, if you actually click into the section on Reaper, you'll also find information about tempo mapping and the count in in their own dedicated section. So the information is kind of repeated, um, but it's definitely good to spend some time uh, reading this in addition to to watching a tutorial like this. So now I'll go ahead and click into Reaper, and this is what the program looks like when it, uh, there's no files open. So you can either open an existing song file, there's even a completely authored sample song that you can download from the download section on the creator site, and it has all the uh, pieces in place, so you can um, play around with that and experiment with, uh, with loading that up and, and adjusting things. But uh, when it's time to make your own, you want to go ahead and click on File, and then look under Project Templates, and there will be a couple of templates uh, installed after you've run the RBN plugins install from Harmonix. And um, uh, the template that will load up will, is going to look something like this, where you've essentially got all of your instruments. Uh, this should look familiar if you watched um, part one in this video series. But uh, basically, this is a series of placeholders for um, wave files, the actual recordings of the audio for each of the parts of the song, and then a series of MIDI charts to go with those that are the actual MIDI notes that turn into the gems that we see on the note highway uh, when we're actually playing rock band. So what I'm going to do is take a look at um, the audio stems for heartstrings, which I received from Clara's audio engineer. And usually what I do after I receive those from the artist is I go ahead and put them into a folder called Audio Stems, and then in there I've got three folders. Originals is where I like to keep the original untouched zip file that I got. And then when I unzip those, I'll put them into a folder here called For Mixing. And this is where I actually pull them into Reaper from. And then these will receive some adjustments to, um, to kind of get them ready for the game. And instead of overwriting these with, uh, with those adjusted versions, I leave these alone and I actually save um, the adjusted versions into another folder called Mixed. So that's what those uh, three folders are all about. But in here, you can see that we've, um, we've essentially got uh, stems for the kick drum, the snare drum, another stem that has basically everything else in the, in the drum kit, so all the toms, the cymbals, uh, etc. depending on how they had mic'd the drum kit when they were recording. Um, basically all the rest of those mics will be kind of lumped together into this stem and that's just how I request it from the from the audio engineer per the um, the most common way that it's done in the uh, in the harmonics documentation. Next we've got the bass guitar on its own and then I ask for a separate stem for each guitar if there's more than one so that I have the flexibility to go through and pick out at any given point in the song what's the most interesting part or the the part that seems to come to the front most readily as what a casual listener would think of as quote unquote the guitar part for that song at that moment um, so in this case there's actually two different um, versions of Clara's acoustic guitar here and then we've got some electric guitar layers so we'll be listening to those um, later on in the series to figure out what we're actually going to map onto the, the rock band guitar for people to play along with. Um, next we've got uh, her vocals. So down way down here is the lead part. Um, and then we have we actually have five harmony layers, which is um, definitely the most I've had so far on any of the songs that have started to come in with harmony parts. Now it's possible sometimes the harmony parts are just doubling the lead and they're singing just um, unison layers to, to make the sound a little fuller, but sometimes they're completely different parts. So again, we'll be listening to those and figuring out what we want to author as singable harmonies um, for when you actually have two and three part vocal harmony in the game. Uh, and then you'll notice that we actually have a dry version of each 
of the vocal stems, and that's basically just the same exact uh, audio file, but with all the effects taken out. So if they'd put any um, compression or delay or chorus effects on the vocal to make it sound cool, we ask for a version with all that stuff removed, because these dry versions, even though you'll never hear them in the game, are what the game engine uses to control the lip sync um, that you see the on-screen avatars uh, doing so that they look like they're actually singing along. Once those effects are in place, it makes it really tough for the engine to zero in on where the consonants and vowels are and, and make a, a nice, clean-looking lip sync. Um, next, we've got the keyboard parts, and we've actually got three different keyboard layers. So once again, we'll be looking for the parts that we want playable, and if that changes over the course of the song, we can edit back and forth between the layers, pick out the playable part, relegate everything else to the backing track, and then the last thing is actually a backing track, so that's got some some sort of backing elements. could be hand clapping or tambourine or uh, maybe some additional vocal sounds or some ambient synths or, or whatever. Um, those are the types of things you'll typically find in here. Sometimes there is no backing track because now that we've got keyboards and harmonies, that was a lot of the stuff that used to be put into the backing track under Rock Band 2. Sometimes these days after you break down all these stems, there's nothing left to put in the backing track. So uh, shortly we'll find out what's in there. So the first thing we do after we've got our template open is we want to bring those stems into Reaper and usually for me the simplest way to do it since since the tracks um, where they're gonna go are kinda divided from each other by these MIDI tracks in between there's no easy spot to drop them in so I just drop them all in at the bottom you could bring them in one at a time but that's kind of a pain so I usually just click on the bottom most track and then I hit control T which is a, just a way to ask for a new track you can also come up here to track and just say insert new track so I just hit control T and that gives me an empty one down here at the bottom. I put the playhead right at the beginning so that that's where they're gonna land. They'll be lined up right at the beginning and uh, they'll essentially start dropping in here and then they'll, it'll automatically create empty tracks below this to hold all of those audio stems. So I come up here and I say insert media file and here uh, I had this open earlier so I jumped right to my um, folder where all my stems are but you just navigate to wherever you've got those stashed on your machine I'm gonna hold, click the first one and you can either hit control A to select all or you can shift click the bottom one and it'll get everything in between and then as soon as you click open it's gonna ask if you want these all on separate tracks and you definitely do so you say yes it's gonna think about it for a while and then there they all are nicely inserted at the bottom of the template. So now uh, now that all the stems are in place, even though they're not up on their correct tracks, I can just move the playhead to the beginning and hit the spacebar to start playback, or I can use these little controls down here, which I never use, and um, hit the spacebar and we'll listen to what it sounds like. So it should sound more or less like the CD mix. Um, this version, I don't know if you can tell in this recording, but the vocals sound uh, a little hot. And the reason for that is we're essentially hearing all of those vocal layers twice because we've got um, we've got the dry versions uh, also playing, which we ordinarily would not do. We'll go through and mute all those so we're not hearing them after we get the tracks in place. Um, but essentially, there's a little bit of business that... Um, that I want to take care of before I start moving them into place. And uh, the first thing that we want to do is create a count-in. If you've played very much Rock Band, you'll notice that at the beginning of every song, there's always um, either some drumsticks or a hi-hat hit or something that's giving you a one, two, one, two, three, four at the beginning of um, the song. And so essentially what we need to do before we do anything else is put that in place here at the beginning of... Uh, the song on those first few bars, and then once that's there, scoot all of the tracks forward so that they come in um, basically on the beginning of the third bar. These numbers up here are the 
the numbers of the measures. So this is the first beat of the first measure. It goes one, two, three, four, and then second measure begins one, two, three, four. Now um, the interesting thing about this is we have an extra step for heartstrings that we don't um, have to do all that often, which is we have to change the time signature. Because um, if you listen to this song, you'll notice it's actually not in 4-4 time, uh, which most of the other songs I've worked on have been. Um, let's take a quick listen. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's a, it's a time signature that's based on three beats per measure instead of four. And Reaper's uh, set up to um, play with four beats per measure by default. So we're going to go ahead and change that. And fortunately, that's actually really easy to do. So basically what I want to do is while the audio stems are all still nicely grouped together here and I can, it's easy to move them as a group, I want to get the very first downbeat lined up with the very beginning of the track. And I notice there's a little bit of dead space here at the beginning um, before the recording starts. So she does kind of a big strum um, right here at the beginning. I'm going to turn off snapping. This little magnet here, when it's on, is going to make the playhead snap to whatever the closest beat is, wherever you click. So if you need to get in there in between, you can deselect that or hit Alt-S to turn it on and off. And I think that that's probably the first beat right there. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So you can actually see the little peaks in the wave where it's happening. If you need to see it a little closer, you can click this little plus sign down here to zoom in. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, so I think basically right here, because she's kind of leading into it with, with that strumming action, I think we're actually going to shave that off temporarily and have this be the, the real downbeat. So I'm going to click the track right there. And then I'm going to scroll down here and click the bottom one. Hold down Shift and click the bottom one. And then just trim off the beginning. Um, just pull it right up to the playhead. And then while they're all still selected, just slide everything back to the beginning. So now that first real downbeat in her guitar strumming is happening right at the beginning of the track. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now I can see that the second measure should really be starting here. And you'll notice that's totally not what's happening in the numbering up here, which is, um, that's what we have to fix. So that's going to be done up here in the master track at the very top. So just to make it easier to see, I'm going to temporarily grab this acoustic guitar track and just drag it up to the top so it's right near the master. And now they're next to each other, so I can I can see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in horizontally and vertically, just so I can see enough detail in the wave to be sure that I'm uh, at the right spot. But I think this peak here is the beginning of the second measure. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's the beginning of the third measure there. So what I want to do um, to, to cause... Reaper to renumber its measures to um, not only start the second measure here instead of here, but also change the time signature uh, to 3-4 time instead of 4-4 four, four time, is I'm going to hit the T key, T for time signature, and then just change the 3, uh, excuse me, change the 4 into a 3, so now it's 3-4 time, I click OK, and now it's moved the beginning of the second measure right to the spot where I had the playhead, and it's changed the number of beats in the measure to three. So I've got one, two, three. You can see these horrors, or these vertical grid lines. Um, and then it's actually done that for the whole song. Two, three, one, two, three. So now we're much closer. The beginning of the third bar is also much closer to um, that peak where I wanted it to be. Hey baby, it's easy to believe in you and